Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, located here in Colorado. And today we're going to do Ask Dave video number 246. The subject of this is our second video on the reference station. The first video on the reference station, we picked a rig. It's the ICOM IC7300 for HF. Now, today we're going to take a look at a power supply. Now, recall that the purpose of a reference station is something you can duplicate if you want to, or you can plug and play different pieces in there. However, when I show how to do them, I'm going to be using the items that we choose to be part of the reference station. Now, the thing about power supplies, first, they're common. Second, almost all of them that are sold for amateur radio work will work just fine with your radio. Uh, it's not something that uh, any special feature or something uh, is going to create a problem. If anything, sometimes special features can get in the way. We're going to look at three power supplies today, the MFJ4225MV, uh, the PowerWorks SSDV30, and the Samlex SEC1235M. Okay, now uh, we are going to power the basic uh, radio here. Uh, the requirements for the radio, if I were to look up the requirements, I think they're probably in the back. Okay, I'm looking here in the 7300 manual at the specifications. And so we're going to look at the general specifications and uh, take a look at the power consumption right here. Okay, the power consumption is standby 9 tenths of an amp, maximum audio, it's 1.25 amp, that's on receive, and maximum transmit will be 21 amps. And that's maximum, that's just on voice peaks, or that would be the peak uh, while you're sending uh, CW. Okay, and it shows the power supply requirement right there at 13.8 volts DC, plus or minus 15%. Now the plus or minus 15% will take you down to 12 and up into the 14 region. Uh, and the reason for that is that this radio, uh, radio's power supply is designed to be used in a mobile or portable environment where you might use just a battery to, uh, uh, to operate it. But as we go forward in the building of our reference station design, we're going to add a VHF, UHF, FM transceiver, which will draw about 10 amps. Now, probably you will not use the transmit on your HF rig at the same time you're using the transmit in your mobile rig, unless you're doing something automatic with the mobile rig, like packet radio or something like that, or for that matter, doing FT8 with your uh, regular radio. So we're going to look for a power supply that can kind of handle both together. So we don't have to buy an extra big power supply or a separate power supply or anything like that. We can have just one. Now let me talk a little bit about power supplies. There are two basic types. There's the analog and there is the switched. Now the analog or linear supplies uh, have a transformer in them, have a pass transistor, and give you an out, but they're very quiet. You just have the, the transformer. Sometimes the transformer can hum a little bit, but that's fairly rare in my experience in uh, modern amateur radio power supplies like the Astrons. I used to have an Astron uh, uh, R35, I think it was. It was 35 max amps. And there's a little linear supply in there that it measures the output voltage. If it starts to drop, it pumps more current. If it starts to go down, it pumps less current to keep the voltage right at 13.8. And that is a um, well understood, very established methodology and not something that you're going to uh, run into trouble on. They're more expensive than switching power supplies. Uh, 
Switching power supplies when they first came out use a technique where they can do away with that great big expensive transformer in there and substitute far smaller transformers. The, reason, the way they do that is by uh, converting the 110 to DC and then converting that DC to the 13.8 using a switching method to charge and discharge a capacitor so you get a steady current out and then it's filtered. Now amateur radio power supplies are heavily filtered and are built in sturdy metal cases so that the switching transients do not get out to interfere with your RF reception. And you can buy with confidence an amateur radio power supply that it will not cause uh, RF. Now I'm going to go through three power supplies that I happen to have here and we'll select one of them as being the reference power supply. We'll put that into the reference station and then use that for uh, further work. The first one I want to talk about is this very common supply right here. This is the um, PowerWorks, PowerWorks uh, SS30DV power supply. It's very common. Um, you see it everywhere. Mine is actually getting a little long in the tooth, about 10 years or so. Um, it's been out for a long time. Uh, it will run on either 110 or 220 volts just by switching that back and forth. One thing to note, if you do order this, sometimes it'll come preset for 220 and you just use a little screwdriver and push the switch back to 110. It has binding posts on the back. It has a computer type cable, uh, uh, power cable input. There is a fan in here. The fan only comes on when, it, when the uh, power supply itself starts to get warm. So that may be while you're transmitting uh, or uh, I have found with uh, my uh, Yesu radio that it came, come on, comes on just a little bit during receive. On the front of it are power pole connectors. The power pole connectors, these Anderson power pole connectors, are kind of cool because uh, it's a fairly standard thing in amateur radio to build the plugs that go into them. And we're going to talk about Anderson power pole connectors in a future video because we're going to use that as our standard connector in the reference station. They can plug right in there or you can connect your radio uh, directly to the back. Uh, you can also connect one like your FM radio here and your HF radio here. They're all, all connected together. Now I want to tell you a little bit about this. It's fixed voltage. It says 14.1 and that's actually what I measured at. That is well within a percent or two of 13.8 volts. It's only three tenths of a volt difference. Okay. Um, and it's a nice little supply. It's quiet. Um, it fits very nicely in any point in your station. It is heavy. It's got a lot of metal in it. Okay, so that's the first one we're going to look at. It will put out 25 amps continuously, uh, 30 um, in a surge. Now, surge might happen if you are using voice on HF and FM at the same time, you could get a surge and the thing will handle it. Okay, a fixed voltage. Now the next one I want to show you is this MFJ 4225MV. Now the 42 is the model number, the 25 is the number of surge amps that will go out and the M stands for metering and the V stands for variable. Now this has meters, and I, I love dancing meters as much as anybody. Of course, the voltmeter is going to read constant, and then the ammeter will vary uh, with the input to the HF radio, quite a bit, in fact. Um, this has uh, power outputs only on the front. It has binding posts. It has a cigarette plug, or cigarette lighter, I guess you'd call these power takeoffs these days. Um, now the thing about it is it's variable with this thing right here. There's a detent that is supposed to be 13.8. The detent on mine actually measures 13.7, but that's in spec for all radios. Now here's the problem I have with the variable. 
This is a great little knob for a kid to wander into the station and change without anybody noticing. And it will take the voltage up or sometimes worse, take it down. So you're only putting eight or nine volts into your transceiver and that's not good for it. So for the main station supply, I recommend against a variable power supply, okay? Now on my amplifier, it's a little different. I've got a huge 75 amp power supply that I can turn all the way up to 16 volts and do because the amp itself is quite content to run at 16 volts. Okay, so now one other thing about this, uh, it does have lighted meters. Um, the fan, there's a fan in here and it's on all the time. I actually went to the extent of uh, disabling um, or greatly reducing the fan in here because it didn't need to be on full all the time. The QST review of this said that the fan noise was medium. I would substitute the word loud and it gets very uh, obnoxious, frankly, uh, after a while. So, uh, but I do have this power supply. This one has a fixed cord attached that's a very long cord. It's about eight, nine feet long. And, well, that rings a bell. Um, so it's a, you know, got its own built-in cord. The other ones have the uh, computer cords. Now this next one is the Samlex SEC1235M, and the M stands for meters. Now the 35 stands for peak amps, and it'll do 30 continuously. Now on this supply here, the only way to get power out are these uh, connectors on the back. And then it has the computer style uh, uh, connector in there. This is a current power supply. It's being manufactured. Samlex makes all kinds of things, such as uh, power supplies, inverters, uh, battery chargers, all kinds of things having to do with power. They really understand it. They even have uh, inverters from DC to AC that will handle uh, uh, bad power factors, uh, which is rare. They're about the only people who do it. This is kind of larger than the SS30DV. Here's the SS30DV on top of the Samlex. You can see that there are different sizes. Um, but I'm going to select this power supply as our reference station design. Again, I point out that power supplies can be largely, power supplies can be largely equivalent, uh, but I'm picking this one. It's fixed. I've measured it as 13.8 volts. I've put it on an oscilloscope. The output looks nice and clean. Um, it's got your dancing ammeter, although it's damped, so you don't really pick up the peaks on this as much as you would uh, on a less damped meter. The 13.8 volt meter reads very nicely. There's little adjustments that you can get to on there. These are actually analog meters. It's kind of interesting to look at these. Um, they um, are not digital. They respond pretty quickly. And uh, one of the reasons I'm picking this is because it is very current, made by a manufacturer who really knows DC power. Uh, MFJ for their, uh, the one that they have there, the 4225MV, um, have picked up a Chinese power supply and reboxed it as uh, MFJ. The same with PowerWorks, reboxed a Chinese power supply. Uh, this one right here is, um, of course, it's not made in the U.S., but it's made in Taiwan um, rather than China itself. And uh, SamlexAmerica.com is the, uh, the people who make it. So this is a Taiwanese manufacturer. The Taiwanese manufacturers tend to behave much more like the Japanese than the mainland Chinese manufacturers. So this will be our radio. And uh, I'm going to plug it in. Now, one practical thing I'm going to show you here 
is that these are designed these are designed on the back so that you put the wire in like that and then tighten that down with a supplied Allen wrench. Now, one thing that makes for a good idea is if the um, wires that you put in there are tinned. When they're tinned like that, they don't spread around. Now you may ask, how are you going to plug more than one radio into this thing? Well, the answer is going to be a power distribution center, which will be the subject of a future uh, reference station videos. So we now have two items in our reference station. We have a rig for HF. We have a power supply that will cover both HF and FM, uh, VHF FM, and uh, we're getting closer. It's great. All right, so um, I ordered my uh, Samlex power supply. I paid for this, by the way. I didn't get a discount or get it uh, sent to me. Um, got it from DX Engineering. The only uh, comment about DX Engineering is that they used to send out their their uh, merchandise with lots of stickers and I was looking forward to the stickers and I didn't get any uh, with this one so I guess they've gone past the sticker phase. Now again to to note how you put these in since this is something you will be doing after you trim them you uh, insert them in here to where they go in you can feel they go in then you take the supplied allen wrench and while making sure that those are staying in just tighten it like this okay now the set screws in there they give you two spare set screws. They also give you something you can solder on to the end of your cables if you want uh, something even more secure in there. And uh, we'll do that when we get to power distribution, which will be upcoming. So this is what I'm going to use. I've already put an Anderson power pole on the radio cable, and I'm going to install this into the station. You'll see that in just a moment. So here is the Samlex installed in the station. I'll turn that on and then I turn on the radio and you can see that everything is working fine. Thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate it if you would subscribe and click like. It would be very good. Uh, also, you can go to dcastler.com support for different ways that you can support this channel. Also, uh, I do a Saturday live stream where I answer questions. If you have questions, please send them to hamradioanswers at gmail.com. That's hamradioanswers at gmail.com. And I will endeavor to get to them in the Saturday live stream. The information for the Saturday live stream is on the page. Thanks for watching, and until we next meet, 73.